Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Professor Asif Qureshi and you are watching Dr. Asif Lectures. In this video, we are going to discuss a case study or an MCQ which is related to Guillain-Barre syndrome. Now, GBS or Guillain-Barre syndrome is a very important topic as far as the examinations are concerned. It is very routinely and frequently asked in USMLE exams, in MRCP exam, in FCPS exam. So let us master this topic of Guillain-Barre syndrome and let's begin with this question. So I'll read the question for you. A 36-year-old woman presents to the emergency department for difficulty with walking. Her symptoms began approximately one week ago and has progressively worsened. She has noticed some lightheadedness with standing up from a seated position and some numbness in the bilateral lower extremities. Physical examinations show four out of five power and decreased sensation to light touch and pinprink in the bilateral lower extremities. Absent patellar and ankle reflexes. A lumbar puncture is performed which demonstrates a cell count of one per microliter, one cell per microliter, and protein count is 135 milligrams per DL. The glucose is 65 milligrams per DL. She's admitted to the hospital and is lined up for further laboratory test. What is the most urgent step to take? And your options are pulmonary function test, ABGs, nerve conduction studies, peak flowmetry, um, and ECG. So guys, uh, such questions whenever up here in the exam, it's a long question obviously, there are some symptoms given, some laboratory findings given and you are expected to not only uh, hit the right answer but it's actually a two-step question. When we talk about the two-step question, the first step is obviously to make the diagnosis. You need to make the diagnosis, the correct diagnosis and then obviously once you have made the right diagnosis, you need to talk about the details of the diagnosis. So this is how you will approach this question. Make the diagnosis first and then details about the diagnosis, okay? Let us one more time look at the question and this time I have highlighted very important findings in red. So this is a middle-aged, 36 year, pretty young, not too old, middle-aged woman. She has difficulty in walking. Her bilateral lower extremities are involved. Uh, ankle reflex and patellar reflex are absent. So there is a reflexia. Look at the cell count. The lumbar puncture cell count is one per microliter. Now you need to think about it. Is it normal, abnormal? So this is normal. So cell count is normal. Protein is pretty high. So protein up to 60 milligram per deciliter is normal, but this is very, very high. And glucose is normal because up till 80 milligram per deciliter is normal in lumbar puncture, CSF. So the summary is that this patient has a lower extremity problem absent reflexes and the lumbar puncture shows normal cell count which shows that there is no uh, particular inflammation in the central nervous system. Protein count however is high and the glucose is normal, okay? So now we are talking about most urgent next step. But with these red things highlighted, we need to make the diagnosis first. So what do you think is the diagnosis? Uh, you might already pick it up since the heading of this case study is Guillain-Barre syndrome. So the diagnosis obviously is GBS, okay? Okay. But what was my pick for the diagnosis? Ascending weakness plus loss of reflexes, guys, is always equal to GBS. So whenever you get a question in the exam, when they talk about lower extremity weakness, when we talk about uh, lower extremity problems, the patient has difficulty in walking, you always, and then this ascends. So lower extremity is affected first, and then it proceeds towards the upper extremity, okay? And there are loss of reflexes. So whenever there is ascending weakness and loss of reflexes, always think about Guillain-Barre syndrome, okay? Now, some important facts about Guillain-Barre syndrome, you need to remember, it's a weakness that starts in the legs and then move towards the chest, okay? We have discussed that. There are loss of reflexes. Some patients, like this patient, also has sensory disturbances, so they have, they have sensory problems. Now, main problem is that when the Guillain-Barre syndrome hits the diaphragm. So it's an ascending problem, it starts with the legs, and when it hits the diaphragm, uh, 
there is respiratory muscle weakness, which is what we call dysautonomia. And re so that's respiratory failure. That's the main, main problem. And if this happens, obviously the patient is going to die. So that's the major problem, okay? Autonomic dysfunction, such as hypotension, hypertension, or tachycardia may be reported. And there may be history of recent infection, particularly more commonly with Clostridium jejuni, but also HIV, Epstein-Barr virus, Zika virus, Mycobacterium Mycoplasma pneumoniae, and who knows, uh, also the COVID virus. There are not data about this, but may uh, be generated in the upcoming years. So very important piece of information for you, okay? So it's an ascending problem. There is loss of reflexes, sensory disturbances. If diaphragm is involved, major, major problem, okay? And particularly, usually, routinely, the central nervous system is not involved and there are circulating antibodies which attack the myelin sheath of the peripheral nerves, okay? So central nervous system is spared and again, remember this combination of ascending weakness and loss of reflexes equals Glenn-Barr syndrome, right? Now, the most specific test for Glenn-Barr syndrome is nerve conduction studies, okay? What it tells you is the de there's decrease in propagation of electrical impulses along the nerves. Uh, so the nerve conduction studies will show slowed conduction signals. But the important point to note here is that it takes about one to two weeks to become abnormal, okay? So if the patient starts developing Glenn-Barr syndrome in the first two weeks, you may have normal nerve conduction studies or they, they, they might not be picking up the disease. However, this is the most specific test, okay? CSF typically shows increased protein, like in this question, and a normal cell count, like in this question, okay? However, the most urgent test would be the pulmonary function test, PFTs. Now, why pulmonary function test is most important? Because you want to save patient from death. If diaphragm is involved, the patient is going to die, okay? Because the force vital capacity is decreased and the peak inspiratory pressure is reduced. So overall, the patient has difficulty in inspiration. Active inspiration is disturbed. So if active inspiration is disturbed, the patient may proceed towards respiratory failure and death. So the most urgent step would be to take the pulmonary function tests, okay? That's the right answer in this particular question. Now, you need to know how to manage the patient and management of the patient includes plasmapheresis or intravenous immunoglobulin. So you do one of them, both are equally good. A combination does not support any, uh, there's no evidence that the combination of two is superior to the individual therapy, okay? Also, you need to know that steroids alone don't help. So whenever in the exam they give steroid as the right answer, steroid alone is not the recommended management for Glenn-Barr syndrome, and plasma pheresis plus IVIG is also the wrong answer, okay? Now, here is a variant of Glenn-Barr syndrome, which is called the Miller-Fisher syndrome. And here you need to remember, it's a GBS variant and weakness is descending rather than ascending. It's from the top to down. And usually in the very initial phases of this disorder, oculomotor nerve is involved. So it's begin from the superior end of the body and moves down, okay? And always GQ1B antibody testing is the right answer. It is one of the tests that we do for Miller-Fisher syndrome. And it is treated usually like GBS with either IVIG or plasma pheresis, okay? So let us now look at this question one more time. What do you think it should be the right answer now? So now if we read it, there is a middle-aged woman who presents to the emergency department difficulty with walking. So lower extremities are disturbed and all this shows that bilateral lower extremity is affected. Bilateral lower extremity also has sensation problems. There are absent reflexes. There is normal cell count and the protein is high. What would be the most urgent stuff? What do you think about pulmonary function test? Yes, this is the right answer. So pulmonary function test is the right answer in this question. And why is this the right answer? Because you don't want the patient to die. You want to pick, it this, pick this up as early as possible that what is the respiratory condition of this patient. If pulmonary function tests are abnormal, this patient needs urgent management. And what will be disturbed? The force vital capacity, okay? You need to remember this. ABGs, ABGs take a long time to be getting abnormal, you know? It might take a few days for the ABG to get abnormal, therefore that is not an urgent stuff. Pulmonary function test is an urgent stuff because if you miss 
FVC reduced on PFTs, then this patient is going to develop the respiratory failure and then the ABGs will be disturbed, okay? Nerve conduction studies are the most specific test. You need this for absolute diagnosis, but more urgent is the pulmonary function test, okay? Peak flowmetry usually takes care of the expiratory volume. Now, expiration is not our problem. In these patients in Glenbar syndrome, inspiration, which is an active phenomena where the patient needs energy and patient if unable to perform inspiration will lead to inspiratory or respiratory failure. So peak flometry is usually of help when you have to measure expiration phenomena such as in COPD, okay? But for inspiration problems, pulmonary function test, okay? ECG, heart is not usually involved, diaphragm is. So of these, the best answer would obviously be the pulmonary function test, which is the most urgent. If in the same question, I change what will be the most specific test, your answer would change. That would be nerve conduction studies. So this is all for Glenbar syndrome in this video. Stay connected, subscribe the channel, share the video, and I'll be back with another video on another high yield topic for your exams. Thank you.